Good morning friends I hope everyone is doing well I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding In the last video I have discussed what is a control hazard and how to do the branch prediction We have discussed static branch prediction and dynamic branch prediction In this video I want to discuss delayed branching technique Now let's take that to execute any instruction i should perform four stages like stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 okay and i want to execute some instructions and remember one thing as it is a let's say that branch instructions are there the result of the branch instruction will come to know after stage 2 let's take that suppose I want to execute I not I one to I ten instructions are there, okay? Then what I have to do? If there is a branch instruction, okay? Branch instruction is there R one comma R two, whether it is a conditional or unconditional. The result of the branch instruction meaning is that should I go and fetch the instruction which is there in the two thousand location or I should fetch the instruction to this result I will come to know. after the stage 2 okay suppose let's take that i have done this stage 1 instruction 1 instruction 2 let's take that it is a branch instruction so next instruction which i have to fetch i will come to know after the stage 2 suppose let's take that i have predicted something that branch will not happen then what i will do i will fetch the instruction or i will start performing the stage 1 and stage 2 and similarly i will do this stage one then only i will come to know that there is a branch is successful then what should i do i have to flush or remove all these instructions and start fetching the instruction which is there in the location 2000 are you able to understand this is what the branch prediction we have done but what is the problem of the branch prediction if my prediction is wrong i am removing all the instructions whatever i have done i just flushed them so meaning is that my prediction is wrong i just burn my hands is it clear so why to burn my hands or why to flush the instructions just they have delayed the branch meaning is that okay you will come to know that whether you have to execute the instruction which is there in the 2000 location or instruction i2 you will come to know after stage 2 then you start fetching the instruction whether it is i2 or i1000 instruction which is there in 2000 let's take the 2000 location i20 so whether you have to fetch i2 or i20 do it after stage 2 so then meaning is that you are not doing anything so then meaning is that you are introducing the stall cycles if you are introducing the stall cycles the performance of the pipeline will be degraded but this is what the delayed branching technique okay suppose let's take that you came to know that after stage 2 then when you will start executing the next instruction meaning is that next instruction you will start fetch from here instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 instruction 4 whether it is i20 or what is the instruction the next instruction you will start fetching from here so clock pal 1 2 3 4 clock cycle 5 clock cycle 6 then next instruction i2 when you will fetch after this s2 am i right or wrong because if it is a branch instruction again you will wait for the stage 2 so then again you will perform the stage 1 stage 2 then stage 3 stage 4 and what is these things you are not performing anything so there is a stall cycles here also there is a stall cycles so when you got the when you perform the stage instruction i2 at the 8th clock cycle now what is happening what is happening with the clock cycles means number of clocks per instruction now if you see that clocks per instruction usually should be equal to 1 ideally it should be equal to 1 because of the pipeline if it is a best pipeline the cycles per instruction or clocks per any instruction should be almost equal to 1 then i will say that it is a better pipeline but now what is happening if it is a branch instruction 
are able to understand if it is not a branch instruction let's say that if it is a branch instruction now what i am doing i am completing the i not instruction in the fourth clock cycle then i1 what i am doing i1 i am finishing at clock cycle 6 am i right i2 when i am finishing if it is a branch instruction if it is not a branch instruction i would have started from here okay I am considering that these are the branch instructions are there. I2 is completing at the 8th clock. So how many clocks per instructions it is taking? It is taking 2 clocks per instruction because it has completed, I0 has completed at the 4th clock cycle and I1 is completed at the 6th clock. So the difference is 2. Similarly here, the difference is 2. So clocks per instruction it is taking 2. Are you able to understand? So I hope you have understood the delayed branching technique. To understand the delayed branching technique in a better way, let me take a small example. So that if you solve any gate question with my technique, you will 100% your answer will be correct and you will solve the question also very easily. Okay, because this concept is very, very important. So many gate previous questions are there related to the delayed branching technique. Okay. Let's take that I have 1000 instructions are there or make it 100 instructions. Why to go for 1000? Let's take that I have 100 instructions. Out of 100 instructions, 30 instructions are the branch instructions. And 70 instructions are the normal instructions or non-branch instructions. Is it clear? 70 instructions are the branch instructions and 30 instructions are the non-branch instruction and I have let's say that I have shuffled them in such a way that 70 and 30 you will have like this are you able to understand so now what will happen if it is let's take an example if it is a branch instruction it will come to know that result of the branch instruction after the stage 2 are you able to understand it or not after stage 2 only, you will come to know that whether it is a branch instruction or not. Means the result of the branch instruction, you will come to after stage 2 out of 4 stages. So you have 4 stages, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 is there. So the result of the branch instruction, you will come to know after stage 2. That is what we have discussed in the just now. If it is a non-branch instruction, I hope everyone know that if it is a non-branch instruction, cycle per instruction will be equal to 1. Am I right or wrong? If it is a non-branch instruction, I0 is completed at the 4th clock cycle, I1 will finish at 5, I2 will complete at 6. So it will take 1 clock cycle per executing the instruction. Okay. If it is a non-branch instruction and if it is completing at the after stage 2 meaning is that it start performing the instructions after stage 2 it will take clocks per instructions is equal to 2 just now we have discussed how we got the clocks per instruction is equal to 2 so for branch instructions we are getting the clocks per instruction is equal to 2 and clocks per instruction for a non branch instruction is 1 okay are you able to understand then we have, if they are asking average number of clock cycles required to execute these 100 instructions as average is equal to 70 instructions are taking one clock cycle and 100, uh, 30 instructions are taking two clock cycles out of 100 instructions. Okay, so how much? 70 into 1 you will get 70 and 30 instructions are taking two clock cycles you have 60 divided by 100 instructions you have 130 by 100 which is equal to 1.3 so clocks per instructions for executing on an average these instructions you are taking 1.3 clocks per instruction are you able to understand it or not let me repeat again you have 100 instructions out of that you have 30 branch instructions and 70 non-branch instructions and that too it is a conditional branch if it is an unconditional branch, it is not a problem. Again, you will take, obviously, it will be, penalty will be there. Are you able to understand? So, let's take that you have a branch instruction 30 and the result of the branch instruction, you will come to know after stage 2. 
then we have discussed how you will get the clocks per instruction is equal to 2 for the branch instruction and if the result is coming to know after stage 2 and 70 instructions are the non-branch instructions and we have discussed clocks per instructions is equal to 1 and if they ask you to calculate the average number of instructions for taking the or average clocks per instruction for executing this one then you have 70 into 1 plus 30 into 2 by 100 you are executing 1.3 clocks per a instruction i hope you have understood so please do like this okay if you solve the gate questions using this concept you can easily solve them i hope you have understood still if you have any doubts related to this concept don't worry, in the coming videos I will discuss few gate questions related to this concept so that all your doubts will be cleared. Still if you have any doubts, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.